game faster, game harder, game cyber. I guess they're putting a lot of faith into me actually being able to build something in this thing. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today I've got this Cyber C Compact Gaming PC, and this is from Cyber PC, Cyber with a C, and I've had several of their pre-builts over the years, bought them from, you know, Marketplace or Craigslist or something, and fixed them up, and, and they've all been decent machines. They're all budget, you know, pre-built machines. In this case, this came right from the Cyber PC website, but it's Cyber with an S, and this is the name of this case, this compact case. So I guess they did sell these as complete computers, but recently they had a sale on their website and they were just about giving these cases away. And they're many ITX cases. Uh, apparently they're kind of hard to build in. I, there is very little documentation on their site, like almost no documentation on their site. And I've only found a few um, videos, maybe one or two of people actually owning these things. So we're gonna be kind of in a little bit of a mystery land here. But I'm going to try to make at least some kind of a decent gaming PC out of this. I've got some uh, parts laying around here that I need to throw into a case. So let's see what I got and let's see what we can make out of this. All right, let's start off with some parts here and see what I got. And I'm going to start off with the, the motherboard. It needs to be a mini ITX. So I've had this thing sitting around for a while and haven't used it yet. This is a Asus and this is a Maximus 6 Impact. And it's a 4th gen... Intel and the chip that's in there is a i7 4790k So not the newest chip in the world, but it's still a very decent capable chip So we're gonna give that a shot. It's got 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM on there. So it's good to go It's got a broken Wi-Fi cable. So I'm not too concerned about that right now. It's got the antenna leads actually are on This guy so the antenna leads look like they were broken off at some point. Instead of trying to fix that, I may just see how well the Wi-Fi works just with this cable here working as the antenna instead of having antennas plugged in. And if that doesn't work, worst case scenario, we can always put a USB dongle in there and, uh, and get Wi-Fi that way. But this thing is not going to be super portable. This thing is, is meant to be like sitting in an entertainment center with your TV. So it's also very feasible just to use the ethernet cable as well. So that's gonna be the main guts of our system since this is a fourth gen. We don't have an NVMe connector on here for the hard drive, so we're gonna be going with a SATA SSD, and I've got a TimeTech one terabyte SSD here. I've used a lot of these, and they pop up on sale every now and then on Amazon, and I snatch them up, and I've gotten some, some good use out of those. Now this case is gonna need an SFX power supply, so I've got here an Apivia SFX power series, and I forget how many watts it is. It looks like 400 watts. That should be enough to get this thing going with a, a mild GPU. This isn't going to be a super fast computer, because when it's all said and done, it's probably not going to be a very expensive computer. Con considering how much I paid for the case and the age of the system, it's not going to be a very expensive uh, top-of-the-line computer. So 400 should get me into maybe a 1060 or something like that. So we'll see GPU-wise what we end up with. Now these things, these SFX power supplies, they're not cheap. Um, this one was about the most least expensive uh, I could find on Amazon without going into some weird sketchy company. And I've used a lot of Apivia before for custom builds, uh, full-size ATX power supplies, and they've all worked fine for me. So we'll give that a shot. So that's the parts we're going to start with. I uh, may have to change things up as we go. I'm not sure what fits in this thing. I'm not sure what it comes with. But let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what's in there. All right, so packed very nicely in that box was the case itself. And it was wrapped in plastic and it still has some protective film on the case parts itself. Then we get a nice little welcome letter here. Enjoy. That's kind of useless. We got a big box here. Let's see what's inside there. One tiny little bag. And here's the quick start, guys. We'll take a look at that. I think if this was a full-size system, then this box might have like a controller and a 
a mouse in it, maybe the power cord and stuff. But since it's just a case, then that box is mostly empty. So let's take a look around the case here. Now I had choice of three colors. One was this kind of gray-white color with some orange accents. One was all orange, and then one was black, like the picture on the box showed, I think, with some orange accents. I think black is kind of boring, so I think that's why I went with this white one. I actually bought two of them. The second one is the all orange one, and it, it actually looks really nice. It's it's kind of um, you gotta you gotta like orange to like it, but <laughs> it looks nice to me. So I'm gonna save that second one for a different build. So we're gonna build in this white one today. Let's take a look at the front. So I'm gonna guess this is gonna glow with some kind of colors. We got a couple USBs and some audio and a power connector, and then some fake looking venting, so it's just all design. Sides look the same. So it looks like it's supposed to look exactly like a console would, you know, maybe like an Xbox One or something sitting on your on your entertainment system. And on the back here, got a couple slots for our GPU. There's probably going to be a redirect here, yep, for the power cord. And then here's where the motherboard's going to sit. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what the insides look like and see what's going to fit in there. All right, so the quick start guide was kind of useless uh, because this thing here is assuming that you just bought a fully working PC. So it shows how to plug it up to your TV, how to plug it into power, and how to boot it up and how to hook up your controller. So that's useless. Also inside the, the box is, looks like a PCI, you know, a GPU redirect. So I'll see what that's for. Maybe it's optional. And then a bunch of case screws, of course, so that's good. And then since there was no instructions, you just gotta figure out yourself how to open it up. Luckily there's a hole right here that had a Phillips screw, just a little Phillips screw in here. And that's holding this case on top. So here's the top case. And this thing's actually heavy. Now I can see why it's got some metal shielding here and a couple wires, I'm guessing for lights. So I'm guessing this cyber is gonna light up. That's kind of dangerous to have that plugged in already. Someone pulled this off and just ripped those cables right off. So we'll have to be careful with that. Looks like we've got a cage here for the power supply, a cage for some hard drives, which I may or may not need since I'm not gonna be using any three and a half inch drives. I'll probably be able to put the, uh, the two and a half inch somewhere in there without using this cage. So let's go ahead and get this cage up and see what's left there. It looks like obviously the motherboard's gonna be back here and the power supply cable comes back here. So that's good. That's gonna mount right into that SFX. So there's definitely not room for a full size uh, power supply. So sometimes in a, even in an ITX case, they leave enough room for a full size ATX power supply, which is nice. You can save some money and get a little bit more power for, for your money. Um, in this case, that does not look like it's going to work. So let's get this cage up and look underneath there. All right, four little screws taken off to get that cage out of the way. And underneath found all the, the case cables. So we got our USB and our power switch and audio and all that good stuff on here. Must be, this must be for the lighting. There's a little kind of uh, circuit board in here with a bunch of headers on it. So that's going to be running all the lights and, and everything, the power buttons and all the input output for the uh, for the case and then I've got four little mounting studs back here for the motherboard and since the GPU slot is over here that must be what that um, little extension cable is going to be because there's definitely not going to be a card plugged in this way so I guess I'm going to have to redirect that that way and then mount the GPU in here so if that's the case then looks like I've got a little bracket here that will probably support the GPU in some way or, or restrict it. So we'll see what kind of uh, length we've got here. I've probably got a shorter, you know, GPU that will fit in here, no problem. So let's go ahead and start uh, getting some pieces dry fit in here and see how everything's gonna work. All right, so it didn't look like with this little uh, board here that I was gonna be able to slip the power supply in this way. So I took four screws out of this cage and they were kind of hard to get to the first three were, were pretty easy. 
the fourth one you got to get just the right angle with your screwdriver back here so thank goodness for magnetic tip screwdrivers to get that little screw out of there so that brings this up so looks like we're going to mount the power supply to this and then mount it back down this little plastic shroud i didn't see that it came off looks like maybe if you take this case apart you may be able to get back to there but just got little four standoffs here to hold this cage back down so we're going to take care of that and this is a 500 watt power supply so that gives me a little better feeling about putting a uh, an i7 in there with a decent graphics card so we should be able to get something just again depends on what size we can fit in here so let's figure out how to get this thing mounted back down and then we'll look at the motherboard all right so the cage just screws on to the power supply like this and i used all four screws even though probably two would have done it now this is one of those situations where one, once this thing mounts in there, you're not going to be able to get to this power switch. So make sure that that's powered on. You won't be able to turn that on and off very easily without taking the whole thing apart. Because you might, might be able to get your finger in there, but I, I doubt it. So I've gone ahead and mounted it with the fan down because it looks like there is some ventilation down here. So we're going to get this plugged in and mount this thing back down. Now as I'm doing that, I'm noticing that I don't see any kind of fan inside this thing and that's despite the fact that the case came with several of these screws which are definitely fan screws but I don't see any place obviously that a, mount, a fan is already mounted and I don't see any place that a fan really can mount so we'll keep an eye out for that that should be interesting there's plenty of ventilation on the bottom here but I'm just not sure how much airflow we're going to have through this thing. So let's get this plugged in and get this power supply back down and then we can start looking at the motherboard. All right, so I got the power supply mounted down. It was kind of a, a challenge, but I'll give you some hints here. Um, the cage just didn't want to sit in there and I found out what this plastic shroud here is for. That's for kind of hiding the rest of this cable. Once you plug it into the back of the power supply and you shove it in, there's just too much cable there and it'd probably be popping up over the case if you didn't have a shroud to keep it hidden in there. So I couldn't get everything to line up right so what I actually did is I pulled as much of this out as I could, then I could slide this thing in, and then once I got it mounted down, then I just kind of shoved it in there, making sure that it didn't, you know, the, the rest of this cable didn't hit the power switch. And I might be able to get a screwdriver in there if I needed to toggle that switch, but my finger's def definitely, definitely not gonna fit in there. So we got the power supply in, we got all of our leads here, so we're starting to get a little bit crowded cable-wise but we're gonna get some of these plugged in in just a minute because here comes the motherboard. All right, so you live and you learn when you're doing these type of things and yep, I just learned something the hard way. Uh, this, this is not gonna fit in here with this cage here. So unless I can bend this motherboard in half and pop it in there, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna fit. So let me pop this thing up and then dry fit this. Now I do need to figure out what I'm doing with the cooler, uh, but now that I see how tall it is, let's go see what kind of cooler I can find. All right, so I took the cage back out, put the motherboard in, put the cage back down, and this time I, I left out the, the hard to get to screw just until everything else is done, just so I don't have to take that one out. So I've just got two screws holding this right now. And I did find, I just had to steal a uh, Intel stock cooler from like a 10th gen uh, i5 and I'm not going to be overclocking this thing obviously this i7 is not going to be overclocked so we're going to hope that this thing keeps it cool enough considering it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of airflow through here so we'll just have to keep an eye on the temps but we got this mounted down and uh, switched out the RAM because the other RAM was a little bit taller and I figured space is kind of a, a premium and want to keep the air flowing as much as possible so we took out this uh, Corsair and put in this smaller Patriot and the other thing that I usually do is I usually boot this thing up on the bench with a known good uh, power supply before I put everything into a case so I'm kind of crossing my fingers that that's not going to bite me in the butt but looks like this thing's mounted in here good to go I need to start thinking about the SATA hard drive where that can go looks like there may be uh, some room back over on this side that I can mount that down even if it's just 
you know, sticky taped in there. It's going to be an SSD, so I don't have to worry about having a perfect mount for it. So I think I'll be able to do that so that I don't have to put this back on top. And that will keep some more airflow, I hope, for the uh, GPU. So let's go look for a GPU, and let's start thinking about where I want to put this hard drive. All right, so i got a couple of cables plugged in right here. So I've got the 8-pin and the 24-pin power supply going down to the motherboard here. You want to pay attention to this guy that's going from this little PCB down here up to the top of the case, which is up here. Um, make sure that you don't get stuff, you know, twisted around that you won't be able to, to fix later. And I got the front I.O. connectors on there. Another tip I would give you is uh, maybe put those on just before you mount the thing down so that it's right there in front of you and you don't have to reach your fingers into tiny little places and try to read... Uh, which direction the, the pins are supposed to go. But we got that on there. I'll hook this up once I get the, uh, the rest of the power hooked up. So I got one lead left over here that's going to have power for this and then power for the hard drive. And I tidied up these over here that I'm not going to need so they can just live down here somewhere. And I'm assuming these are just going to get squished down when I put the, the top back on. So that leads us to the GPU. So here's that connector I was telling you about. We're gonna plug that in and it's gonna give us a right angle, I guess, to get to our GPU. And I found a 1650 in my pile of GPUs. 1650 should be plenty, uh, plenty strong for this generation CPU. Plus it's a, a low power draw, so it doesn't even need a six pin. It's just gonna get all of its power right over the PCI connector so it's going to help us a little bit with this smaller 500 watt power supply. So let's go ahead and hook this thing up and see if I can figure that out. Um, another thing to note is there was an Allen wrench in the supplied uh, screw bag and I was kind of curious what that was needed for and I found out that there is a couple Allen screws here that were holding the PCI slot covers on and that's kind of an odd choice so right down here where those slot covers were, was just no way to get this at an angle to get those things off. So I'm not sure why they used Allen, Allen screws for that. If uh, anybody from CyberPC is watching this video, go ahead and let me know in the comments below what you were thinking when you put those on there. Are you just trying to keep lazy people from taking your GPU out? I don't know. But I got them out. I'm not going to put them back in. I don't think I'll just use some regular... Phillips head screws. So let's get this GPU mounted in here and then we'll figure out the uh, rest of it. All right, so I got the GPU in there and I've never really used one of these PCI risers before, but what I can tell you is it's not super flexible, uh, but that's not a bad thing. Once I got it plugged into the motherboard and then plugged into the card and then kind of shoved the card in here, there was some resistance to it because of its non-flexibleness. Um, but it is actually kind of supporting the weight of the card a little bit. Before this was on here, and when I dry fit the card by itself, um, it did sag a little bit, and right now it's kind of being held up by that. So hopefully that is a sturdy connection. We'll find out. This bracket here, I'm still not sure what that is used for, if it's a support or if it's just a, a guide for this, uh, this other cage here to sit on so that it doesn't hit the uh, bottom side of your uh, GPU here, but it doesn't look like it would stop it from hitting the bottom side of the GPU. So I'm kind of glad that we're not going to need that metal shield or that metal cage because that would be sitting right on top of this exposed circuit board here pretty much. So that would not be good. So we got one thing left, it looks like. Find a place for the hard drive and uh, then we get to boot it up. All right, so I hooked up a SATA cable and then SATA power to the hard drive. It's right underneath here and uh, gave it some power. Also gave power to that PCB that I'm guessing is gonna run some lights for it. And I just got it tucked away right here. So quite honestly, I'm probably gonna be okay with just tie wrapping it to the rest of these cables once we're all done. But with this setup right now, I think I'm gonna take the case, pop it down on top, and I think we're at a place that we're ready to boot and see if we can get into the BIOS. All right, so if you take a look at this mess, you can see that things probably did not go as planned. So I did test fire this thing up and I got nothing from it. So 
this Asus board has a whole bunch of diagnostics built into it, and it looks like the the best thing it could tell me is the CPU is bad. So I popped out that CPU, I put in another one, same generation, just an i5 version, and it did the same thing. So I'm guessing there's something wrong with the board. I did as much troubleshooting as I could um, with the thing in there, disconnected as much stuff as I could that um, I, I didn't need to get it to boot, and I still couldn't get it to boot. So at this point, this is a, a good lesson as to why I always test bench these things before I install them in a case. And I say always, except for this time. So that's just Murphy's Law for you. So I'm going to take this out. I've got another board that I did just test fire, and it works good. So we're going to pop it in there and see if I can get that one to work in this case. Now, as you can imagine, taking this out and putting the other one in pretty much requires the removal of everything. So I'll be back in a few. All right, so here's what I ended up with. And it's messy right now, but I'll get all this stuff cleaned up. But basically, we've got a H310 board on here, and it's got an Intel i5-9400F processor. A little bit stronger than the, the fourth gen that we had before. Probably a little bit more energy efficient. So that's going to work out nice, and it'll pair up nicely with the 1650. So we got that in there with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and uh, now we've got working Wi-Fi because... The other one had the, the janky Wi-Fi cable coming out the back. So that's going to be good. I'm going to clean all this stuff up and get it ready to uh, boot up. All right, got everything a little bit nice and neater in here. Um, pay no attention to this. This is still that cable that's going up to the top. And the other nice thing about switching out this board uh, is this newer board actually had an NVMe slot on it. So you can't see it from here, but right under here is a one terabyte Western Digital Black Drive. So that's going to be much nicer than that SATA, plus it takes away, you know, two more cables that we don't need to plug in. So this thing's ready to box up, so let's get the lid back on it and boot this thing up. Alright, so we'll take a look at what the case looks like once we get this thing all working, but first I just want to boot this thing up and see if we can get BIOS up on the screen. So I'm going to hit the power button here, start smacking the keyboard. And there we go. So we can see the i5-9400F, 16 gigs of RAM, and here's the Western Digital Drive. So everything looks good. So let me grab a Windows boot disk. I'm going to get Windows installed on this thing, and then I'll be back once that's done. All right, so I'm convinced this case is cursed. <laughs> and let me explain that. I've got this thing together and booted it up. We went into BIOS, everything looked good. But then I closed it up and tried to boot it and it just black screen, no, no booty. So uh, open it back up, looked around, make sure everything was connected right, make sure nothing was getting smashed when I put the case down. And same thing, close it up. It, it would boot sometimes, it wouldn't boot other times. So it seemed like it was booting, but the Graphic, nothing showed in the graphics, so I tried different monitors, I tried different power cables, I tried all kinds of different stuff. Got Windows completely installed and updated and everything, and then the next time you go to reboot it, it wouldn't come up at all. So, I'm not sure exactly what was going on with that. Um, the other thing is, is if this thing is supposed to have lights everywhere, I can see light bars, like underneath the cover here, where you saw the leads go into that. And there's some light bars on the bottom and on the sides that are supposed to glow. All of them connected to that little PCB that was in the middle of the case that we gave uh, the voltage to from the power supply. And none of those lights are showing up. So that, that whole board is probably um, either bad or something, something's bad. Probably a cold solder joint or something. Probably just shoddy manufacturing, if I had to guess. So that's not working. Uh, I've got it working right now, and I did uh, benchmarks with a user benchmark just to see if everything's showing up right and of course it detected all the hardware everything looked right I'm running this heaven benchmark here just to give it a little extra you know stress test on the GPU and everything and it's it's running perfectly fine I'm not 100% sure if maybe since we got that riser cable for the uh, the PCI riser cable to connect the GPU that maybe since the GPU doesn't require power it's pulling all the wattage over that riser. Maybe that's the problem. So if I continue to have issues, maybe I'll grab 
a, uh, a small card that needs you know an 8 pin or 6 pin voltage connection and I'll do that and see if it works any more stable but for right now I'm going to continue to get it set up test out a couple more things and see if we can get it to boot you know 100% of the time right now I don't think that's the case so here's the result of the uh, heaven benchmark not bad considering this is just a 1650 card so this thing will play plenty of games no problem and the whole time it was running it was keeping the GPU in about the 70s uh, temperature wise that's a little higher than I'd like but it's not shocking considering there's absolutely no uh, forced airflow through this case it's just a, a closed box basically so I didn't check the CPU but I'll run another test to check the CPU temperature to see what it's like but I'm sure it's not going to be horrible it's just not going to be perfect so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a full look at what the case looks like fully assembled and then uh, I'll give you some final thoughts about it after that and before I give you the uh, the final look at it as I was putting the screw in here to hold the case back in that's the first screw that I took off I, I was thinking to myself that that kind of looks funny that looks weird that you get an exposed hole here and two little uh, you know divots there and then I remembered there was a couple parts left in the bag that I didn't know what they were and look what they are so these are just little white plastic uh, covers and there's another one of these on the bottom we didn't take the the bottom cover off didn't need to uh, but these things will snap on there and hide that screw so that's a nice touch for an otherwise haunted case so let's go ahead and get this thing uh, and take a look at it so here's what the top of the case looks like and to give you some kind of scale this is a full-size keyboard here so you can see it's not a tiny case of all the many ITX cases I put together this is probably one of the larger ones and it is I guess the width is is like this because of the side-by-side -side configuration of putting the GPU over here um, definitely isn't tall enough to uh, to put a GPU standing up in there but let's take a look at the front so this, this does look like something that maybe in the early 2000s would have looked perfectly uh, fine up on your uh, entertainment center next to your PlayStation and stuff like that. Um, definitely a set-top box looking. One thing to note about these guys here is that they are, in fact, upside down. And by that I mean normally when you plug in a USB cable, like for example this guy right here, the seam on the USB connector usually goes facing down on PCs and that's not the case on this one you have to flip it over and the seam faces up so that's that's a little weird um, I only see that messed up a couple times on computers but overall it's it's a pretty looking case I'm wishing the, the lights would have worked when I put together the second one which is the, the all orange one I'll see if the lights work on that one it might be something I did wrong, but I don't think so, because really there's just one cable that comes out of that little PCB that, that takes, you know, just a, a Molex connector input, and it should give it 12 volts, and it should work just fine. So overall, it's an interesting looking case. It's not, not something that I would spend a whole lot of money on, probably not something I'd go out of my way to build in, but since it was such a good deal and I had the extra parts, I went ahead and did it. Now this was not a fun build i'm sure by watching this video you can tell that there was a lot of problems the first motherboard didn't work and now i'm wondering if that's not the problem with the motherboard itself maybe it's something wrong with the case that was causing that um, but we had that whole fiasco of taking it back out and putting in the new one and i started this morning it's now midnight i've been working on this pretty much on and off all day trying to get this thing working right and this has definitely been a, uh, a pain in the butt as far as the build goes. But hopefully if, uh, if you ever find one of these cases, at least you'll have some input as to what the goods and the bads are. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. I've had just about enough of this thing so far for one day. I'm ready to, uh, to get some rest. And hopefully you guys were at least entertained, if nothing else. Um, maybe you learned something about it, maybe you didn't. But if you found it at least helpful in any way, then I appreciate that thumbs up. If you want to see more crazy stuff like this, i got plenty of parts to build and plenty of weird cases to build in, then uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But in any case, thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.